Scott? Scott? Form called as she knocked on the door to Scott's hotel room. It was the next morning, and the band needed to get over to the park to get ready. Forn continued knocking as Luna and Dusk stood beside her in the hallway. Scott, come on! You'd better not still be asleep, Luna called. Forn stopped knocking and sighed. He's not answering, she said. What do you think he's doing? Dusk asked. I don't know. Maybe he's in the shower? Forn said, putting her ear to the door to see if she could hear water running. Or maybe he got drunk off the minibar and passed out. This isn't the first time this happened, Luna said. Come on, Scott, move it, Forn called again, knocking harder on the door. Maybe he's not in there, Dusk suggested. He could already be at the park. Call him. Forn took side and took out her cell phone and dialed Scott's number. When it started ringing, Dusk heard something. Wait, she said putting her ear against the door. From the other side, she could hear a small ringing tone. Do you hear that? Dusk asked Luna. Luna then put her ear to the door and heard the ring tone. Yeah, she said. Scott's phone is in his room. And Scott wouldn't go anywhere without his phone, Dusk said. Which means Scott is in there. Forn agreed, putting her phone away. As a maid with a cart was walking by, the girls decided to ask her for help. Excuse me, Forn said. The maid stopped and shifted her attention towards the girls. Our idiot friend is still asleep, and we need to be out of there in 15 minutes, Luna said. Could you please unlock this door? Oh, yes, of course, the maid said. With that, she took out her keys and unlocked the door. Thank you, Forn said. The maid smiled and the girls before returning to go on about their business. The girls walked out of the room, and what they saw turned their stomachs inside out. Scott was laying there on the bed with his eyes gouged out, with holes that went straight through his sockets and out of his skull. There was blood everywhere. Oh my god! Foran cried, putting her hands to her mouth. Luna and Dusk couldn't believe it either. Oh, I feel like I'm going to be sick, Dusk said, before ducking into the bathroom. Foran felt her knees. Oh my god, she repeated. Later, after the police had examined, documented, and cleaning up the crime scene, Scooby and the gang stood around the Hex Girl's room while the girls were still in shock. The incident had caused their performance to be cancelled today, and now that we're going to try to figure out what's really going on. The cops are still ruling Scott's death as a homicide, Fred said, as he placed, paced the floor. They said the holes in his head may be made out of knives, Velma said. Like, what could have happened? Shaggy asked. Amongst all this talking, Foran just sat there, staring off into the distance. Somehow she felt responsible for all this. Maybe it was some sort of accident? Daphne suggested. But they didn't find anything in the room. It couldn't have been an accident, Fred said. Whoever did this to Scott must have gone into his room without letting him in, Thelma said. Maybe someone got in his window and attacked him, Luna suggested. On the sixth floor? Thelma asked. Luna shrugged her shoulders. Stranger things have happened, she said. It was Kruger, Foran muttered, almost inaudibly. Like, what did you say? Shaggy asked. It was Freddy Kruger, Foran repeated, louder. Again, with the nightmare stuff? Luna asked. I'm telling you, Luna, this is real. They're not just nightmares, Foran said. Think about it. With Scott, they said it looked like he'd been stabbed and that there were no fingerprints or any sign of struggle. Just like Carly Jessup. Yeah, but Scott's not the only one having nightmares. You are, Luna said. But maybe Scott had one too, Daphne said. We are talking about Kruger before he went to bed last night, Dusk said. What do you think, Fred? Thelma asked. Well, if this were a couple of years ago, I would have laughed this whole thing off, but I think Forn has a point. Scooby-Doo gulped. Like, this Kruger guy can actually kill you in your sleep? Shaggy asked. As he started to shake, It's all right, Shaggy. I don't think he'll come after us, Daphne said. Luna had enough. You guys are all crazy. It was probably some prowler that broke in. That was all just that, just some prowler, she said. Why do you gotta make it so about the supernatural about this time all the time? Look, Luna, maybe they have a point, Dusk said. Oh, now you wanna believe in the stuff too? This is all just too much for me, Luna said. Okay, I could take real witches, 
And I believe in vampires. But some guy who can kill you in your dreams? It's just too ridiculous. Ignoring the arguing, Forn popped another pill in her mouth. Sleeping was completely out of the question at this point. That night while everyone was trying to sleep, Luna was now having a hard time with it. She began to sweat and groan, but she didn't know it. She was having a nightmare. In her head, she was standing in next in her father's dentist office. At the front desk, the dental receptionist sat there. Hello, Luna. Your father called you in for a checkup? She said. Yeah, I guess, Luna said puzzled. This was weird. Luna didn't remember scheduling an appointment. How did she even end up here in the first place? Okay, you can go in and wait. He's just finishing up another patient, the receptionist said. Okay, Luna replied. She slowly walked through the dental office. It looked and smelled the same as it did, but something was completely different about it this time. When she saw a patient sitting in the chair, she recognized the back of her father's head, wearing the mouth mask, while he examined the patient's teeth. Dad? Luna called. Hold on, sweetie. I'll be right with you, her father said. All right, I'll finish. Thank you, doctor, the patient said standing up. No problem. See you next time. Luna's father replied before the patient walked away. Luna watched the patient go. She was still confused. It's okay, Luna. You're up next. She heard her call her father call. Luna slowly walked over and sat in the chair. Her father turned on the chair light. It was the bright rays always bothered Luna's eyes a bit. Light's a little bright, Dad, she said. It was. The light was so bright she couldn't even see her dad's face looking down at her. Open wide, her dad said, ignoring her. She opened her mouth wide, and her father felt around her mouth. Ooh, there's a cavity, he said. What? I haven't had a cavity since I was five, Luna protested. It's all right, honey. We're just going to fill it real quick. Luna sighed in relief as her father reached into a drawer for a syringe. All right, this will only hurt a bit. Say ah, her father said. But when he pulled his arm out of the box, he was wearing knife glove fingers of Freddy Krueger. Luna screamed and the room went black. Suddenly, she found herself in the room running through a hallway of a high school. She didn't know what she was running from. She just knew she had to get away. As she ran, she covered her ears. She could hear the horrible laughter of a pursuer. Do you believe in me now? She heard someone shout. She stopped in her tracks and saw Freddy Krueger standing before her. You're not real, she tried to convince herself. Oh, yes, I am, Kruger said, walking towards her. I am real as the cut on your arm, Freddy said, taking a slash at Luna's left arm. In the real world, a cut was made for real, and blood trickled on the bed. Luna gasped in pain, and Freddy grinned. Still don't believe, he asked. How about now? He slashed her across the chest, just above her breast. It really hurt. Luna was getting scared now. She clutched her bleeding chest. Stop it! She screamed. What about now? Or now? Freddy shouted while slashing her across the face. Luna screamed. In the real world, Foreign, who was not asleep, noticed Luna's struggles and walked over to her bed. Luna, what are you doing? Foreign said. She gasped when she saw the cuts and blood all over Luna in her bed. In her dream, Luna was still being attacked by Kruger. Do you believe in me now, bitch? Huh? Do you? Kruger laughed as he slashed Luna's face. Luna couldn't stop screaming. In the real world, Foreign started to try to shake Luna awake. Luna, wake up! Wake up! She screamed. What's going on? Dusk asked. She apparently had been woken up by Foreign's yelling. Dusk, look! Foreign said. Dusk looked over and gasped when she saw what was happening. In Luna's dream, Freddy continued cackling while Luna screamed bloody murder in an attempt to stop his assault. She grabbed a hold of his shirt, ripping a small piece of it off as she began to fall backwards. Luna, wake up! Foreign screamed in the real world. All of a sudden, Luna jolted awake. She panted loudly. Luna, Dusk said in disbelief. Luna was covered in blood. She was shaking and crying. Help me, please help me, she pleaded. Dusk, call 911, Foreign said. Luna, you're going to be okay. Through her sobs, Luna managed to choke up. It was Kruger. She passed out. Ford couldn't believe it. She really wanted to start crying too, but then she noticed something in Luna's fist. What's this? Ford asked herself, taking it out of Luna's hand when it felt like cotton or wool when she realized. 
It was a piece of Kruger's shirt. About 20 minutes later at the hospital, Luna was being rushed onto a stretcher. She had a breathing mask over her mouth as the paramedics pulled her towards the operating room. Four and dusk, Luna and, and the Mystery Inc. watched as the operating room doors shut. Foreign, what happened? Thelma asked. Foreign said nothing and she just looked down at the ground. Foreign? Thelma pressed. It. Foreign started. What? What was it? Fred asked. It was Freddy Krueger, Dusk blurted out. The game gasped. Is it true, Foreign? Daphne asked. Foreign then looked up at them and slowly nodded her head. You are absolutely sure? Thelma asked. Without saying a word, Foreign reached into her pocket and pulled out a piece of Kruger's shirt and showed it to the gang. Where was it? Scooby asked. It was a piece of his shirt, Foreign answered. Like, where did you get that? Shaggy questioned. Luna must have pulled it out of her dream, Foreign said. You mean, there's a way of bringing things out of the dream world? Daphne asked. Foreign nodded again. So what happens now? Dusk asked. I don't know. I really don't know. Thelma said. About an hour later, Foreign, Dusk, and the gang were sat in the waiting room, waiting for the doctors to give them an update on Luna's condition. A few minutes passed, and two men stepped out of the waiting room. One of them was a familiar face from O'Caven, Mr. McKnight, Foreign's father. Sally, he said, walking over to his daughter. Daddy, Foreign said, standing up and hugging her father tightly. Foreign then turned around to the other man and gave him a hug. I'm so sorry, Mr. Brooks, she said. It's okay, Sally. None of this was your fault, Mr. Brooks said. Mr. Brooks is Luna's father. He works as a dentist in Oak Haven. He's mostly responsible for all the fake veins worn by the hex girls from when they performed. All right, then. A nurse then walked into the room. Sally McKnight? She called softly. That's me, Foreign replied back. Foreign Dusk and Mr. Brooks walked over to the nurse. Is my daughter going to be okay? Mr. Brooks asked. She's going to be fine. She had a lot of cuts on her faces, and she'll need a few stitches. But I'm sure she'll be out of there by tomorrow morning, the nurse said. Can we see her? Dusk asked. Not right now. She's about to go into surgery, and she needs a rest. Oh, thank you, doctor, Thorne said. Just one thing. How do you suppose this happened to her? The nurse asked. Thorne and Dusk were now at the loss of words. How they were supposed to explain this? Especially when something similar happened to Scott just a couple days before. Well, Luna's been a very strange sleeper. She tends to sleepwalk at times, so she must have done this to herself while she sleeps. Foreign lied. Do you suppose it may have been an attempt for her to take her own life? The nurse asked. No. Foreign and Dusk answered quickly. The nurse's attention turned to Mr. Brooks who shook his head. Not to my knowledge, no, he said. Well, we're just letting you know that Luna's going to be fine. You could pick her up tomorrow, the doctor said. Thank you, Mr. Brooks said. Then the nurse then walked back into the operating room. Foreign Dusk and Mr. Brooks walked over to the gang and sat back down. How's Luna? Daphne asked. She's just fine. Doctor said she'll be able to leave in the morning, Mr. Brooks said. Fred sighed in consolation. Oh, that's a relief, he said. Well, now that the stress is off, what do you say we all go down to the cafeteria and get something to eat? Scooby and Shaggy's eyes instantly light up. Like I never thought you asked, Shaggy said cheerfully. Rare, Scooby licked his lips. You guys go ahead, I'll catch up, Foreign said. Are you okay? Thelma asked. Yeah, yeah, I just need a minute, Foreign insisted. I'll catch up too, I've got to hit the john, Mr. McKnight said. Now with that, everyone but Foreign got up and walked out of the waiting room. Foreign just sat there feeling horrible. She had been bottling up her emotions for the last hour and a half. She had really thought this Kruger was going to kill her friend. She slowly rose from her seat and walked out of the waiting room with her head down. She reached into the outside of the room and sniffed. She then thought that Kruger was able to do these things that to her was really getting her emotionally. Her head started to hurt bad. She put her hands on her forehead and leaned against the wall. It wasn't long before she slid down the wall on the floor and began crying. Kruger was going to haunt her for the rest of her life, and there was nothing she could do to stop him. She could sit her going back to the hotel and just to go to sleep, and just to let Freddy kill her. That way he wouldn't at least go after her friends. 
Sally? She heard her father's voice called. She looked up to see her father walking from the bathroom. She quickly wiped her, her tears. Her father kneeled down right in front of her. What's wrong? Did someone hurt you? He asked, holding her chin to his hand. No, I'm fine, she quickly said. You don't look fine to me, Mr. McKnight said. What's bothering you? I don't want to talk about it. Honey, you could tell me anything. You know that. Fornan stared at her dad for a few seconds, then suddenly wondered why Kruger was mostly attacking her. Sure, there were a few people here, or, but there, why was Freddy so interested in tormenting Forn in particular? Daddy? Forn asked. Why did we move to Oakhaven? A chill shot down Mr. McKnight's spine, but he tried to brush it off. We just felt like we need to move to a better house, he said. Daddy, Forn said, looking at him seriously. Why do you want to know, he asked. Fred Krueger, she said. An even bigger chill went down Mr. McKnight's spine, and again he tried to play it off. Fred Krueger, what, he said. You know who he is, Daddy. I know you do, Forn said. What did he do to me? Sally, I think you need to calm down. No, Forn yelled. I want to know what happened here. I want to know why Krueger's after me. What did he do to me? After you? Sweetheart, what are you talking about? Just tell me. McKnight sighed. All right, fine. You want the truth? Four nodded. Back when you were about four years old, you just started to go to preschool at Badham. We lived on Elm Street then, in that old Lance house, he said. That Lance house was just a house across from the one from where Carly lived. They said that a boy that lived in that house had somehow been sucked into his own bed one night. Every night you wake up screaming in your bed about some guy named Freddy Krueger coming into your dreams trying to kill you, McKnight continued. Naturally, your mother and I figured it was just your imagination. But, Forn asked, but a few days later when I was in town, I heard from one of the co-workers that a boy who lived in the house before us had been murdered. Everyone assumed he was killed by that Krueger guy like you always talked about. Your mother and I didn't want you to be raised in that house where someone was murdered, so he moved you to Oak Haven. Forn looked at her father. After a week or so, you stopped being afraid to sleep, and your nightmares stopped. I'm surprised you remember her all this time, he said. It all made sense now. As long as Forn was in Springwood, she would have, might have nightmares about Freddy. But all these night murders happened. She couldn't let anyone else get hurt because of her. She needed to finish this. Do you understand now? McKnight asked. Forn nodded. Thank you, Daddy, she said. She stood up and followed him into the cafeteria. Inside they saw the gang, Dusk, and Mr. Brooks sitting in the table. Fred, Daphne, Velma, Shaggy, and Scooby-Doo had all plates, but Dusk and Mr. Brooks just sat there waiting. As Ford and her father walked over to the table, Mr. Brooks stood up. Hey, just thought we'd wait for you, Mr. Brooks said. You hungry? Yeah, starved, McKnight said. You want anything, Sally? No, I'm fine, Ford replied. With that, her father and Mr. Brooks looked away from the table to get in the food line. Guys, Bourne said, turning to her friends, I have to tell you something. They all leaned into the table for a huddle. What's going on? It's Kruger, we have to take him down, Forn said. Like, are you out of your mind? Shaggy whimpered. Quirly, Scooby-Doo said. Listen, we have to find a way to stop him. If we don't, he'll just keep hurting everyone else in their dreams, Forn added. Okay, how do you suggest we stop him, Forn? In case you haven't noticed, he's not in the real world. Dusk said. Well, then we'll just have to find a way to bring him into the real world, Forn said. But that's impossible, Daphne said. No, it's not, Thelma said. Remember that piece of Kruger's shirt you had, Forn? Yeah, Forn said, pulling it out. If we could bring that out, we could possibly bring all of them out, Thelma said. Okay, so how do you want to do this? I mean, which one of us is going to go to sleep? Fred asked. Me? I'm the one he wants. So I'm probably the best person for this job, Forn said. Well, he's probably anticipating this move, so who's to say he's not going to kill Forn, then attack all of us when we're asleep, Dusk asked. They all fought for a moment. Hold on, I've got a plan, Velma declared.